Rivers are an essential component in human civilizations. However, as human civilization developed, environmental changes on the rivers and its basin changes, due to urbanization and human negligence. Here, in Southeast Asia, Sitharum River of Indonesia, and Pasig River of the Philippines, are amongst of the several river systems in the region, that are choked by pollution, and environmental degradation. This is the tale of the two river systems in Southeast Asia. The dying Sitharum River of Indonesia, world's most polluted river. In the Philippines Pasig River, once a dead river, coming back to life. This is a story, on how Indonesia, could learn from the experience of the Philippines, on rehabilitation and restoration, of once a dead river. The Sitharum River, is the longest and largest river in West Java, Indonesia. It has an important role in the life of the people of West Java, as it supports agriculture, water supply, fishery, industry, sewerage, and electricity for 25 million people. As Indonesia's most strategic river, the Sitharum is the source of water for the Jatilaha Reservoir, which is Indonesia's largest reservoir at 3 billion cubic meters of storage capacity. The reservoir, not only supplies clean water for Bandung, but also provides 80% of the water supply for the capital. Three hydroelectric power plant dams are installed along the Sitharum. All supplying the electricity for the Bandung and Greater Jakarta areas. The waters from these dams, are also used to irrigate 400,000 hectares vast rice paddies in Karawang and Bekasi area. Making northern West Java lowlands, one of the most productive rice farming areas. And is a source of energy for three hydroelectric power stations serving three cities. Considered as Indonesia's most strategic river, industrialization rapidly growing in the surrounding basin of the river. After years of uncontrolled industrialization and improper waste management disposition, with less intervention with the national government, as it became the dumping sites of industrial, residential, and agricultural waste. The river become heavily contaminated, as it is considered as the world's most polluted river. To illustrate how dirty the Sitharum River is, at some places we cannot even see the water. Its surface is completely covered by the unimaginable amount of waste, trash, and dead animals floating on it. Findings from the study conducted by the Asian Development Banks and Blacksmith Institute in 2013 found that the levels of fecal coliform bacteria are more than 5,000 times on its mandatory limits. And lead levels are more than 1,000 times based on U.S. Environmental Protection Agency drinking water standard. And levels of other heavy metals such as aluminum, iron and manganese are above the international average. There are more than 2,000 companies in the area, mostly textile factories built near the river because they need large quantities of water. In recent years they have discharged enormous amounts of chemical waste directly into the river. While some 9 million people live in close contact with the river, have nowhere to dispose their rubbish, so they either burn it or throw it into the river. Environmentalists have observed that over 20,000 tons of waste, and 340,000 tons of wastewater from those textile factories, are disposed directly into the river on a daily basis. A result of this pollution, has been the elimination of a significant part of the river's fish population, estimated at 60% since 2008. Despite the filth, fishing is still widely practiced along the river. People and their animals also ingest contaminants through their food, mostly rice, which is irrigated with water from factories and villages or from the Sitharum and its tributaries. Aside from environmental degradation, many residents surrounding the river suffer from dermatitis, contact rashes, intestinal problems, including severe conditions like the delays in child development, renal failure, chronic bronchitis and a significant incidence of tumors and other serious health problems. The Indonesian government, after been pressured from international organizations, such as Greenpeace, 
about the state of the river, has established a seven-year cleaning program for the Sitharum, with the goal of making its water drinkable by 2025. The program is also supported by the International Monetary Fund and the Asian Development Bank, which committed $500 million to finance the river's rehabilitation. Currently, the cleaning up of the river is now under control of a military operation. The Philippines' 27-kilometer Pasig River, and its vanishing networks of creeks and rivers, tell a captivating story, of a river system which refuses to die. It is a story of the convergence of various stakeholders. Improved the river's water quality. Increased its biodiversity. Enhanced its economic value and brought it back to life. With a watershed area of 663 square kilometer, covering 23 cities and municipalities in Metro Manila and Rizal province, it serves as the only channel, which connect the Manila Bay in the west, and Laguna Lake in the east. As early as the pre-colonial years, the Pasig River served as the main artery for transport, trade, and cultural exchange between the Philippines and its neighboring countries. Now home to a population of more than 14 million, which accounts to almost 40% of the gross domestic product of the country. The Pasig River has become the subject of many efforts for rehabilitation and preservation. After it lost its importance as a vital waterway, when it was declared biologically dead in the 1990s, after years of uncontrolled urbanization and industrialization, during the colonial and post-World War II period, several river restoration initiatives began as early as the 1970s, until the government created the Pasig River Rehabilitation Commission in 1999. To spearhead and harmonize the multifaceted and comprehensive rehabilitation of the Pasig River through collaboration with its stakeholders, with an average annual budget of only 4 million US dollar in the last eight years, the PRRC worked with its partner and resettled almost 20,000 informal settlers' families in safe and decent government units. Increasing their resilience to natural and environmental hazards. Developed 39 kilometers of riverbanks into linear parks, walkways, and greenbelts, which now serve as environmental preservation areas and a multi-functional open space for recreation and tourism. Dredged 2.8 million cubic meters of contaminated silt and sediment and removed more than 27 million kilograms of floating garbage. Ensure that the waterways are free of debris and navigable for water vessels. Revived the Pasig River Ferry Service on 2007 to enhance east-west connectivity in the country's national capital region. The expansion of the ferry service operation, beyond the Pasig River, is already on the work, to serve the communities in Manila Bay and Laguna Lake. In order to address domestic and industrial waste pollution, PRRC sealed an agreement with concessionaires to fast-track the establishment and connection of the households to sewage and septage treatment facilities. Secure the power, to inspect the operations, and wastewater treatment facilities of factories, and commercial establishments from Laguna Lake Development Authority. In similar agreements, is being explored with the Environmental Management Bureau. To cover all the cities within the Pasig River system. Through these collaborative efforts, we have seen positive improvements in the water quality of the river which is the reason why life is already coming back to the Pasig River. Water quality parameters such as total suspended solids, pH, temperature, nitrate in oil and grease, and pico coliform have improved the Philippine standard for Class C level. The rehabilitation of one of Manila's busiest waterways, the Pasig River, has been recognized in the first Asia River Prize Awards held in Sydney, Australia on October 2018. The River Prize, which is given by the International River Foundation IRF, is a recognition of organizations that work on the rehabilitation of rivers and the implementation of a river basin management. Today, people can already catch carps, catfishes, morels and sea terns, swallows, orioles, 
kingfishers, and other birds along the Pasig River. Fruit-bearing trees, flowering plants, and vegetables have grown in the linear parks, which are now enjoyed and consumed by children and adults alike. Now, with the completion of 2017-2032 Pasig River Integrated and Strategic Master Plan, restoration efforts will expand to cover areas beyond the Pasig River system to the larger ecosystems of Manila Bay and Laguna Lake. In the next 15 years, urban river management for Pasig River will be more spatially coherent to accommodate multi-scale solutions. To ensure land-based development performance is at par with environmental quality requisites. Streamflow condition can safeguard urban communities and aquatic life. Stream corridors are reinforced defense lines and a source of unique and multiple environmental and social benefit and water quality is sustainability fit for purpose. There is still a long way to go but with the continued support, the dream of a clean and alive Pasig River is within reach. Cleaning up the river is not only about cleaning the basin, collecting the garbage, dredging sediments and installing sanitation system. It's about policy and institutional reform, technical and environmental knowledge, and political will, and partnering the private sectors and NGOs for sustainable results. This is our Pasig River. Puso para sa Ilog Pasig.